bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the blackbrazildoday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So in tonight's video, um, the idea for doing this story actually comes from a situation uh, that we've been reading and hearing about from a, a popular actress in the United States. Um, you know, I had covered this this particular topic from the Brazil side of, between three and four years ago. But I wanted to bring the topic up again because of recent comments made by not just one African-American actor, actress, but two. The first was Taraji Henson. You know, all, most of us know who Taraji Henson is. A lot of us know her from, you know, it might be Empire or it might be, uh, what was the name of that, Baby Boy. She's had a lot of uh, hidden, hidden figures some years ago. She's pretty well known. A lot of us, most of us know who she is, even if we haven't seen all of her films. But Taraji Henson has been the talk of social media for the last few days when she appeared on a serious radio interview in which she said she was talking about quitting acting because of the pay and how she was being treated in the entertainment industry. Now, you know, I didn't listen to the whole interview. It was just, you know, a lot of us have seen just like the little clips, uh, the sound bites that she's some of the things that she said. And I was honestly intrigued. I was blown away when she said that a film that she did, what was it, Benjamin Button? Uh, she said that Brad Pitt made $10 million in that movie while she was paid $150,000. I was blown away when she said that. She said she was hoping to make half a million on it, and it came up well short of what she was expecting. Not only that, but she talks about, talks about the way she's treated in the entertainment industry. You know, a lot of us seem to think that it's all, you know, peaches and cream in the industry. But, you know, this is something that I've been looking into for a number of years. You know, I came to understand just how scandalous the entertainment business can be when I first learned about everything that Little Richard used to talk about, you know, just 30, 40 years ago when Little Richard was talking about how he got exploited in the industry. And once you dig into this topic, you come across story after story after story after story. And we all have this idea that all of these people that are in film and television and music, they're just you know, they're just raking in the money. They're living high on the hog, big, you know, the big mansions and all of the cars and the, the nice clothes and all of that. A lot of us don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. And, you know, scandal after scandal comes out that lets you know that it's not everything that is cracked up to be. Now, the other person who made a statement about, you know, the salary that he makes you know, was Terrence Howard and Terrence Howard and Taraji Henson, uh, Taraji Henson, they starred in the Empire program that was, you know, it was on top for a while. I remember I wasn't necessarily into the series, but I was still living in Sao Paulo when that series came out and they had that on television in Brazil as well. Terrence Howard claims that he made only $12,000 from the film Hustle and Flow, say he's owed 20 years of royalties. Now, I never saw Hustle and Flow. Just looking at it just didn't seem like a movie I would really want to check out. But still, the fact that he only made twelve thousand dollars from that film is, is something else that's going to just, you know, make your eyes bug out like what? You know, I would list Terrence Howard as like an A-list actor. How does he come away from a film project making twelve thousand dollars? So anyway, this is not new. You know, I discussed this in 2019 with one of the topics, one of the subjects of this video. And I think 2020 in the other subject. Now, there's many ways to dissect this particular argument, discussion, accusation. And I don't think we can necessarily know everything that should be considered when people make such accusations. You know, for me, I'm looking into this. I would like to get more information from other artists who are willing to speak out on this topic from the Brazilian side. But for now, I'm going to just look at three or four different situations that point to, you know, it's kind of a similar situation that's going on with Black Brazilians. So the name of the article today, uh, are Afro-Brazilian actors and actresses paid less than their white counterparts? 
What do actress Chris Viana and actor Babu Santana have to say on this topic? So let's get directly into this video. So this is Chris Viana here. Um, so this is a, a still taken from an interview she did, like I said, back in about 2019. And I, the three points that I want to make, and there's probably going to be more as I go along, are these three. I just talked about the first one, African-American actors and actresses on salary inequality, the case of Taraji Hinton and Terrence Howard. Number two, I'm talking about Afro-Brazilian actress Chris Viana and actor uh, Babu Santana. And then the third comes from the behind the scenes of a recent global TV novella, which was called Nos Tempos do Imperador. OK, so all of these things are linked. You know, pay attention to this story. And let's just see, you know, does it compare to what African-American actors and actresses are talking about? So let's keep this moving. OK, this is a picture of Chris Viana. I don't say it was probably about a decade ago, but she still looks good. I think. uh Chris Viana would be what, maybe 46 now, I think. So uh, the information that I'm bringing you today comes from several sources, uh, Heightness, Contigo, Vogue Brazil, a Gazeta, and of course, the Black Brazil Today channel or uh, blog. So let's get into this. Chris Viana is a well-known Brazilian actress who the public has come to know after her performances in numerous novellas as well as films. Some of her best-known work came in the novellas, the novellas Duas Caras of 2007, Paraíso from 2009, Fina Estampa from 2011, and A Regra do Jogo from 2018. She has also been recognized for her work in films such as Ultima, Ultima Parada, Un Sete Quatro from 2008, and Bisoto from that same year, which she won a Trofea Hasa Negra Award for in 2010. Trofea Hasa Negra is, a, is an award ceremony that's put on by the people behind Brazil's only uh, black college called Uni Palmares or Faculdade de Zumbi dos Palmares in Sao Paulo. And they put on an award show. It's, I don't know, you could compare it to like an Essence Award or NAACP Awards type ceremony. So she won this award uh, in 2010. This is a picture of Chris Viana from the novella Duas Caras. Viana has won at least five awards for her acting, um, has appeared in nearly 20 novellas, seven films, and two theater pieces. Chris has also been a featured dancer in at least two competitions in Rio's famous carnivals. Yet, even with all of her experiences, Viana feels that the salary she commands doesn't match her accomplishments. This is also the case of well-known actor Babu Santana, both of whom I will briefly discuss. This is actor uh, Wilson Habello. Um, so to start, I want to share the thoughts of a vet veteran Afro-Brazilian actor named Wilson Habello. In a 2020, 2022 interview, Habello was quoted as saying, I feel deeply disrespected when I see white people who have just started out earning much more than me. So this is taken from the Agazeta uh, website. Uh, what he says, he says, earning much less than young white people is an absurdity, says the actor from Bakudel. I'm assuming that's a, either a television program or a film. So this is the actor, um, uh, Wilson Habello. OK. Asked if it was industry standard to get behind new talent. Habello responded. Look, I'm not a star. I'm aware of my place and I don't romanticize when it comes to making money. But a young white person getting a leading role uh, presupposes a background and experience that he or she doesn't have. I'd like to know what the criteria are when it comes to scaling and pricing remuneration or salary. Are they, although I'm aware that there are now other forms of professional, professional qualification when it comes to gauging salary. When asked for examples of other qualifications, Habella replied, having taken part in Big Brother Brazil, for example, Babu Santana is an excellent actor and his salary only improved after he took part in BBB, again, uh, Big Brother Brazil. So Big Brother Brazil is a reality show. Um, I think it's like might be in the 24th, 25th season. But this was the point of the article that I did in 2020. Like, why is this? award-winning actor appearing on a reality show. I'm going to get into that in a minute, but this is what he's talking about. He's, you know, Babu Santana was struggling. 
he had all of these awards. He had all of these TV shows and movies under his belt, but yet he was struggling to pay the rent. OK, so let's take a look at the cases of Chris Viana and uh, Babu Santana. So this is a still from the YouTube video. Uh, Chris Viana, this is her on the left. Uh, this is taken from the Vogue Brazil YouTube channel. And it says here, Muria Preta no fica rica rápido. Uh, she's saying the black woman doesn't get rich quick. Com mil currículo, se fosse branca, já estaria lá. So she's saying with my resume, if I was a white woman, I would already be there. So listen to what she's saying. She's saying, hey, if I, if I was white, she would probably be in the millions. And I've seen it doesn't take much. You have to be just, you know, young, white and attractive and the money will come in, you know, whether you do it in on social network or other platforms where you're going to just get ahead faster than somebody of your equal who might be black. It's just seen too many examples of this. In 2019, Viana uh, participated in an interview with Mateos Mazafera on the TV Vogue or TV Vogue to talk about what's happening in her life. Her comments made headlines and I covered the story on the Black Brazil Today uh, blog. During the chat, the actress opened the chat about her financial situation. With participation at the time in 12 novellas, many believed that Chris was rich. However, she denied this thought saying, I'll tell you something very sad to hear. A black woman doesn't get rich fast. With the resume I have, I was supposed to be a millionaire if maybe I wasn't black, she said. The information made the journalist Mateo Mazafeda bring up a little discussed subject. Racism, of course, racism in Brazil is something that's very much discussed now, but it was something that was just kind of denied, pushed under the table for many years. So he asked a question. Do you think that if you were blind with blue eyes, you would already be there? Speaking on being you know, like millionaire or multi-million dollar status, Mazafeda wanted to know. In all sincerity, Chris answered and got and she got real with Mazafeda. I don't know if blonde, but white for sure, she replied. OK, um, this is the article that I am I'm borrowing some of, you know, the the original article that I put up on February 15th, 2019. With the resume I have, I would be a millionaire maybe if I wasn't black. So this is uh, if you want to read this whole article, you can go over to blackbrazilToday.com. This article is still up. So what's the deal with Babu Santana? So this is Babu Santana right here, a highly awarded uh, Afro-Brazilian actor. Almost exactly a year after Viana's comments in 2020, I wondered why it was that a successful actor such as Santana was appearing on a reality show. This is Babu Santana. He portrayed the late soul um, popular, uh, Brazilian popular music singer Tim Meyer right here in the 2015 film. This is Babu Santana dressed up as Tim Meyer. Did a pretty good job in making him look like Tim Meyer right here. In 2015, Santana, soul, he starred as Brazilian soul singer Ching Maya in a biopic that brought him more recognition for his talents than any of his previous performances and her, earned him two awards, including the Grande Otelo Award, which is known as the Grande Premio do Cinema uh, Brasileiro, but takes the name of one of Brazil's greatest, another underappreciated Black actor, Sebastião Bernardes de Souza Prata, better known as Grande Otelo. Just a, a quick side note with that um previously the grande premio do cinema brasileiro or you know the like the big award of brazilian cinema it was nicknamed the grande otelo award but now it's been officially this was just news that came out within the last month if i'm not mistaken um they actually they're calling the award ceremony the grande otelo grande otelo awards named after the actor grande otelo uh Black man who was considered one of Brazil's greatest actors. Yeah, I guess he died, I don't know, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, not sure. Real small guy, but, you know, enormous in, in terms of his acting ability. So how we call the Academy Awards, the, the Oscars, they're now calling the great or the grand prize of Brazilian cinema. They're calling it the Grande Otelo Awards. OK, um, so this is Babu Santana. Uh, he's taken his award at the 21st Chita Denchi's Film Festival. Babu also took home awards for his supporting role in a 2007 film, Estomago, 
The actor has earned a total of six important awards over the course of a career in which he has appeared in more than a combined 70 television programs and films. With such accolades, this leads to the obvious question. What is it that, why is it that such an accomplished, recognized, and award-winning actor, why is he appearing on a reality show? In a previous video, I mentioned how it seemed that many Brazilians who had appeared on the top-rated reality show managed to parlay their exposure into endorsement deals, acting careers, or other ventures that showed that it was lesser, it was of lesser importance if they were eliminated from the program. It was just, you know, as I've said, I've seen just I don't know, dozens, seems like dozens of people who have appeared on whatever season of uh, uh, Big Brother Brazil. There was one guy who went and got into, you know, uh, uh, a political career. You've had people, like I said, they get endorsement deals, they get into movies, they get into television, you know, they start producing their own line of clothes. I've just seen a lot of people, it's almost like it doesn't matter if you went on Big Brother Brazil or not. If you appeared on that, you can turn that into some, you know, famous success. Let me see here. Um, Santana probably needed both the exposure and the money. In the 2020 interview, Santana revealed the harsh reality of Brazilian cinema. He said that it was impossible to make money making movies and that the money he earned was used for basic expenses. Ching Maya, the 2014 film, had a budget of around three to four million reais and 200 people working on it. How much do you think I earned? Would it be enough to support a family of four and buy a plot of land? Out of 40 years of my life, I've only made more than 100,000 reais a year in three or four years. How do you buy a house and have a comfortable middle class life? Babu asked. So, you know, depending on where you live in Brazil, you know, 100,000 reais, you know, could stretch a long ways. But if you're living in Rio and Sao Paulo, it's quite expensive to live in the, you know, the upper middle class neighborhoods in those two cities. So obviously, if he's working, he wants to live close to where he would work, whether either be, you know, Rio or Sao Paulo. And, you know, to be a star, 100,000 reais is not a lot of money. You know, I mean, it's a lot of money for just the average Brazilian. That's true. But 100,000 reais for a person who's supposed to be a well-known actor, who's won all these awards, been in more than 70 film and television productions, that's, that's not a lot of money. He says, um, all the houses I went to live in, when I paid a rent of more than 1,500 reais, I had to leave in less than a year because I couldn't afford it. Why is this guy in this situation? Why, with such an award-winning career, does he have to you know, appear on a reality show? You know, in a reality show where you do get people who are semi-famous or people who might be social media famous, or you might have people on there who are not famous at all. And here he is on the show competing also. Speaking on the situation, a friend who shared a place with Santana, his children and girlfriend, Felipe Botelio, said not long ago he wanted to take a hairdressing course so he wouldn't go hungry. Before getting on Big Brother Brazil, we were in need. We spent a week eating bread and butter for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We only had enough money to buy 12 rolls, and we owed for the rent. Listen to that. That's incredible. You know, award-winning actor, and he's eating bread and butter for, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Struggling paying the rent, uh, constantly being uh, possibly thrown out of where he lives, running up debt. You know, what's happening here? Winners on Big Brother Brazil take home winnings of 1.5 million reais. Even though he came close the year he participated, Santana was eventually eliminated from the 2020 edition of the reality show. To continue this subject, it became news in 2022 when the global TV network, again, Brazil's top television network, was being investigated by the public prosecutor's office due to complaints that included an alleged pay gap between white and black actresses performing on the novella Nos Tempos do Imperador. According to information in a column in Brazil's top newspaper, 40 de Sao Paulo, the complaints include the differences in treatment between the actors on the novella according to their race. Now, keep in mind, Taraji, uh, Taraji Henson, she didn't just speak out against the salary she was getting, but also how she was treated. This is the same thing that black actresses are saying who participated in this uh this 2022 novella the company is also accused of paying black stars less to do the same work as white stars so this is what the headline says racism on a novella global is being investigated by the public prosecutor's office 
And the denouncement includes a supposed uh, salary difference between whites and blacks. Now, do all of these accusations automatically mean that racism played some part in perceived inequalities? There's no way to know for sure. Um, to play the devil's advocate, one could easily point to other reasons for such outcomes, which also may not be fair, such as age, weight, beauty or attractiveness. So what I'm saying here is I, before I can go forward and be just like, OK, it's always about racism. We do have to always look at, OK, what are the factors that's at, at play here? In the case of um, the older actor that I spoke on earlier today, this guy right here. 64 years old. Now, it's unfortunate, but in the entertainment industry, you know, age is going to play a factor. He's 64. Um, what else? Weight is going to play a factor. Um, beauty, how attractive are you, is going to play a factor. So we look at somebody like Babu Santana. He's a little bit overweight. He may not have movie star features either. Let's just be real about it. I mean, maybe I see people who are actors or actresses and their skill level is going to take them where they want to go. But at the same time, film and television productions are going to be like, well, who's the guy who's going to bring the audience? Who's going to be the heartthrob? Who's going to be, you know, the sexy woman on the screen? You know, and the, the appearance is going to play, you know, a role in what you, you know, what type of roles you're going to be offered as well as your salary. Um, I made a point of the video that I made a couple months ago was talking about how the Zapi Keno character or Lil Zay character in Sedata Dedeo, City of God, inspired the Killmonger figure in the Black Panther movie. So why is the guy who played Zapi Keno or Lil Zay, uh, Leandro Firmino, why is he not a big star in Brazil? And in this video, what I went through was saying was that, you know, he's gained quite a bit of weight since he was Zapi Keno. He's a short guy. Looks like he may be about five, four, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, He's also dark skinned. And in Brazil, just being dark skinned is one is something that's going to disqualify you. It's like I'm not saying this to say I support this type of discrimination, but looking at the factors that contribute to the type of work that people get, the roles that they get and how much they get paid. We have to look at all of those factors. Now, in the case of Chris Viana, I have to ask that question, you know. Why does Chris Viana feel like, you know, if she were a white woman, she'd probably be a multimillionaire by now? Does she have a point? Um, is her point as valid as the one made by Taraji Henson? And before I jump to a conclusion, I say that's definitely possible. But I would like to hear more actors and act black actors and actresses in Brazil step forward and, you know, provide some proof as to why this might be true. You know, until then, it's uh, I guess we could say a speculation. I can partially buy what they're saying here. I can't explain, you know, Babu Santana, he should be he shouldn't have to be eating bread and butter, you know, on rolls to to get by. He shouldn't be having to struggle to pay fifteen hundred reais in rent. OK, so I definitely agree with that. I just want to say we need to go a little bit further. I want to hear if there are mother, other Afro-Brazilians who are willing to speak out on this topic. So curious to know what you thought about today's video. Um, definitely drop a comment in the comment section. Um, consider subscribing to the channel, you know, like this video, share this video. Um, if you think, if you think this is a, if you think this video deserves any support, you know, definitely, uh, you know, drop a super thanks, you know, maybe buy me a coffee with my, uh, my, uh, what you call it, my cash app at M R M A R Q U E S seven, two, that's a cash app. Um, click on the notification bell so that you'll know when I put up a new video. And with that said, I'm going to end the video here and ask that you all come by and check out the next video that I post.